All right. We're live. We're cool. Okay. So, let's just get this straight. I'm Jake. Hi. Welcome. And today we're going to be doing a one-hour handstand masterclass. This is coming from my handstand course, which is available in the link in the description. It is the handstand masterclass, and we are going to be walking through everything that you can possibly learn about the handstand in one hour. These are going to be all the key insights that you're going to need to go through to master your handstand. We're going to just need a wall, an open space, and we're going to be able to get set up immediately. The cool thing is, is that you just need to follow along. I'm going to be asking you to do a few things with me, but at a certain point, you'll probably reach a level where you're like, oh, I can't go on. It's too hard right now. I just want to show you all this stuff so you can understand what that journey is going to look like, and you can see all the key insights in one video. Now, we're going to go ahead and get started. There's going to be some beeping in here. That's to keep me on time because I want to get this all done in one hour. I've got it all paced out, and we're going to get started off with a quick warm-up, okay? We're going to be starting off by warming up our shoulders, our wrists, and our hip flexors, which are the three key areas for the handstand. Let's get started off with shoulder circles, okay? So, arms are going to go out, and we're going to go forwards for 20 seconds. Notice that I've got this hyperextension in my wrist right here. So hyperextension, my wrists are pulled up. That puts the shoulders in a slightly better position. We have 10 seconds left here. Keep breathing. We're looking for a little bit of speed here to get some fire in the shoulders. Two, one, and now we're going to curl the hands under and go backwards for 20 seconds. <sighs> Taking a deep breath. I'm ready to work out today. A bit, bit excited, but having a bit of fun. Now my body's starting to move, it's starting to get a little bit better. Keep going, we've got 10 seconds left. The shoulders are this critical link in the handstand. It's the most important joint to warm, so we're looking for some heat here. Now what we're going to do is switch over to a lat stretch. We're going to take one hand, pull it up, and we're going to push down to the opposite side. Right here, this is going to stretch out the lats, which if you have tight lats, you're going to have a closed shoulder in the handstand, and it's going to force you into an arch. So this is a great way to stretch it out. We want to make sure we keep our body in line. You can see my arm is out in front or behind. It's in line with my body. And looking up at the sky. Three, two, one. And then arm up over to the other side. There we go. We're here for 20 seconds. Look up. Keep breathing. You want to feel a deep stretch down all the way from your armpit to your hip. Your lat runs all the way. It actually inserts on the top of your humerus. It runs all the way down. Breathe in and out. Three, two, one. All right, next we're going to move into my favorite warm-up of all time. It is the sun salutation. We're going to take the hands up, cross the hands, push them out, arch back, wide hands, and then fold forward down to the ground. I love it if you are following along with me right now because you're not, you can only get so much insight from watching somebody talk about a handstand. Really, you get that major insight from following along. So we're down in a push-up position now. Move to the bottom of the push-up for Chaturanga. Sweep the chest forward into Upward Dog. My hips are off the ground. I'm squeezing my triceps, looking up at the sky, feeling the stretch in my stomach. Breathing in to the belly and out. Now, we're going to move back into Downward Dog. Downward dog, butt goes up and back. I'm gonna pedal the feet back and forth to warm them up. And now, both sink down for 10 seconds. Push the outside of the armpits down to the ground. Feel that stretch deep behind the knees. Breathe in, exhale. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to move into our hip flexor stretch. So hip flexors will cause an anterior pelvic tilt. Anterior pelvic tilt is your butt sticking out. So we need to stretch them out. The way we're gonna do this is get down on our knees, and we're going to I have to take my shirt off for this so you can see what's going on. We need to keep the abs engaged by drawing the pelvis in and squeezing the glute. That's going to push the front of the pelvis forward. And right there, that's going to get us this nice deep stretch. Breathe in. We're here for another five seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right, now we're going to switch sides. Exact same thing, opposite leg. We're going to squeeze the glute of the back leg and crunch the core in to feel a deep stretch down the front of the thigh. Hold this for 10 seconds. You can make it more intense by leaning forward or less intense by leaning backwards, but those cues stay the same of core grip crunched, 
glute squeezed. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get down on our butt, arms go out, we're gonna do wrist circles right here. So my hands are making big circles with my wrists. Trying to stretch them out. They, uh, it's always called my wrists to crack and pop. Feels good. <laughs> and we want to go the other direction now. We want to crack and pop now rather than later when we're in the middle of a handstand. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a prayer stretch. Hands go together. Palm stays together as you push down. You can see, here if I get a little bit closer, you can see pushing down right here. And now inverted prayer. So backs the hands together and pull up, backs the hands stay together as you pull up. Three, two, one, and shake that out. Okay, so now just shaking this out, we're gonna move into the actual workout. For this, like I said, we're just going to need a wall and an open space. And we're going to get started off by just focusing on how to get out of a handstand safely. That's going to be the bail. Now, there are three different types of bails, but all we need to do is focus on the pirouette bail or the cartwheel bail. So, I'm going to demonstrate a handstand and watch what happens when I go over. So, I'm going to kick up and I'm falling over and I bail. That's what we're going to learn how to do first. If you don't know how to do that, how to get out of handstand when you start falling over safely, then you have no business kicking up in the first place. Again, kick up, start falling over, I bail. Now there are a lot of different ways to do that, but that's the most important thing. So we're gonna learn this bail first. After that, we're going to move into perfecting our position against the wall. Then we're going to focus on how to kick up to the handstand. Then we're gonna focus on how to fight for the handstand and remain balanced. And then finally, we're gonna focus on taking all that together for the perfect freestanding handstand. We're gonna get started off in a few seconds. I'm just gonna put my hair up, otherwise it gets all in my face. <laughs> so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna focus on getting you upside down for the first time. If you've never been upside down before, this is the progression that we're gonna follow. All right, getting upside down for the first time. We're gonna focus on walking up the wall like this. Just watch me do it. So we're gonna have this push-up position. My arms are locked out. Kick one foot up, and then I step up against the wall. And then when I'm ready to come down, I can either step down like this, or I can jump down. I mean, I want you to ideally jump down because that's going to build more into the bail. But that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to do this together in the next one minute, 30 seconds. So we're going to focus on locking out the arms. We want to keep the lock arms locked out because that's going to keep the tension in the bones rather than the muscles. So my arms are locked out. I'm squeezing my triceps. I can push my arms straight. And I'm in this push-up position right here. My feet are against the wall, right? Now we're gonna push back and up into that downward dog position. From here, we're gonna take one foot, whichever foot you're more comfortable with. I'm gonna use my left foot right now. And we're gonna put it up and put the ball of the foot on the wall. Then we're gonna kick that leg straight and shrug up, keeping the arms locked out and the other foot's gonna float off the ground. We can keep it down here or if we're feeling good, we can match it on the wall and we're holding our first hands in. And when you're ready to come down, you can step down or you can jump down like that, okay? We're gonna do that one more time. So, arms locked out, but up and back. Then take one foot, kick it up against the wall, straighten out, other leg floats off the ground, keep the arms locked out, shrug up the shoulders, focus on that, and match the other foot on the wall. Hold this for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then float on down. All right, we're doing pretty good on time here. Let me check to see if there's anything in the chat. Anything going on? What's up? <laughs> Spriggs, looking good. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on the bail now. So. From there, what we need to do is we need to get closer to the wall and focus on actually stepping the hand around. So we have this position right here. We're up and we're floating down right now. What we need to do is we need to work on bringing that around because when we're doing a handstand, we're actually gonna be traveling through that, uh, the full handstand position and then jumping down and twisting in the air. So it's going to look like this. We're gonna walk up like this and we're gonna start off by just jumping to the side. But as we get better, we're going to focus on walking up and then twisting all the way around in the air like a cat. 
that's what we're going to be working on doing. We're going to work on that by simply jumping to the side more and more and more. But first, we're just going to focus on jumping to the side, coming down like that. Push up position, downward dog, get up like we did before. And this time, we're going to jump to the side. So look at where you're going to jump to, and then hop down and bring your feet to that side slightly. That's all it's going to be right now. Okay, let's try this together. Up. And then get another 45 degree hands in. Look at where you're going to jump to, and jump down to that side. Easy enough, right? Now what we're going to do is just straddle the legs and split them down. So we're going to land one foot, then the other. So, that's going to look like this. Push up position. I'm going to straddle my legs. I'm going to bring it down one foot, then the other. Still nice and soft. That's all we're focusing on for right now. Okay, let's do that together. Push up position. Downward dog. Straddle the legs. Bring them down like that. Easy enough. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do that same thing. We're going to walk in one step. So we're going to step in, get one step closer to the wall. Exact same thing. Looks like this. Watch me. Step up. Step one hand in, like this. Now, both my hands are in. I'm one step closer to the wall. And then straddle my legs and bring them down to the side. Easy enough. So now, let's try this together, OK? Walk up, take one step in, straddle the legs, bring them down to the side. All right, so that is getting close to the wall and adding that bail in. We have the straddle down. We're going to work on bringing the hands around so we actually can travel through the handstand position and bail. But we're going to forget about going upside down for right now. We're going to just do a move called jump around froggers. So right here, it's what this looks like. We're going to Focus just on the hand movement that's required to turn around. We're going to shift the weight to one hand, lift the other hand off the ground, step it around, and jump like that. Just to focus on the hand movement. That's all we're focusing on for right now. So, the hand movement, just to be clear, you're going to step your dominant hand around and twist your body in the air towards that direction. So for me, that's my right hand. So, I'm going to shift by pushing my weight into my left hand, step my other hand around, my right hand around, so my body is square to the direction that I'm jumping to. And then I'm going to push both hands into the ground and control myself on the way down. Looks like this. Right here, down on the ground, shift, push into the ground so the other hand floats off, step around, and jump. Let's try this together, okay? So get down on the ground in this deep squat position right here. This is going to be a jump around frogger. So which hand is going to step around and which side are you going to jump to? We're going to shift to this one side. I'm going to be shifting to my left side right now so you can see me jump around. Shift to my left side, my right hand's going to step around, I'm going to be square, and I'm going to push onto the ground. Go ahead, and just step through that right now. Don't jump. Shift, lift, step, and then, now that your hands are square, pivot your hands so it's facing forward, so both hands are facing the same direction, and jump around like that, okay? Let's do this one more time. So, we're going to shift, lift, step, jump, like that. Okay? So, now we're going to focus on bringing that to the wall. That same hand movement, we're just going to step the hands around so they're square, and we're just going to apply that to the wall like we did before. It's going to look like this. Just watch me for a second. Push-up position, arms locked out. Step up, and I'm upside down. I take a step closer now, and then... Before I shut my legs and start coming down to the side, I'm going to look at where I'm going to set my hand. I'm going to shift to the opposite side, set my hand around, and then straddle my legs down like that. Simple as that. We're just turning our bodies so they're square to the direction that we're landing and stepping our hands around so that's possible. Let's do that together, okay? <sighs> it's going quick. It's going quick. I'm <laughs> having to do a lot of work. Let's get in this push-up position. Downward dog. Step up, take one step in, match the hands. Then look at where you're going to step your hand to. Look at that spot, shift to the other side, lift, step, and then straddle your legs down. Let's do that one more time, okay? I'm going to give you a few, uh, so, uh, slightly fewer cues this time. Push up position, downward dog. 45 degree hands in, step in. Now, 
shift, lift, step, and come down. There we go. That right there is pretty much the full bail. We're going to work on getting closer to the wall until our chest is touching. That's going to be this full bail. But before we do that, we're going to take just a quick break right now, take the backs of the hands together, and decompress. <sighs> I'm getting tired. <laughs> it's a lot of work to do with these handstands. And that's the whole point is that this is a workout. This can be a shoulder workout, a chest workout, a tricep workout. It works your pushing muscles and your support muscles, but also because of the flexibility that's going to be required for that perfect handstand, as you'll see in a second, it's going to allow you to develop this really amazing posture where your chest is back, your hips are underneath your body in perfect alignment. You don't have this anterior pelvic tilt with this rounded chest like this, head sticking out. No, handstands kind of for force you to be in perfect alignment. We're just decompressing the wrist right now because a lot of beginners have a problem with their wrist being really sore when they start doing handstands for the first time. So I'm just doing this inverted prayer stretch that we did at the beginning, feeling the stretch along the uh, extensors of the wrist right here, and pulling up. And now let's go ahead and shake that out and breathe. Glad to hear that this is going great for you. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on getting our position up against the wall really, really tight. It's going to be focused on the proper position against the wall, which I call the stacked position. It's going to look like this. On, so imagine that I'm upside down against the wall. I'm going to push my upper chest out to touch the wall, and my hips are in line with this. My legs are straddled, so one foot is on the wall, and the other foot's off the wall. That's what we're going to ultimately be working up to. That straddle is going to allow you to get the feeling of going off the wall without actually going up the wall. You can still use it for some support. It looks like this. So this is what we're going to be working up to now. We're going to walk in all the way this time until we are about a hand's distance away. Then we're going to take one step out, shrug up, push the upper chest to the wall, push the hips to the wall, and then keep that tension as we allow our body to drift off the wall like this. And this right here is what I call the stack position because our body is aligned perfectly from our wrists up to our shoulders to our hips to our toes. And then when you're ready, give me that straddle position coming down. All right? To do that, we're going to work on our hollow body shape. That's going to be this. So this is going to be a hollow body shape. We have this almost dish-like shape where we're curved and it creates this hollow body. That's what's called in gymnastics. We're going to be focusing on the core engagement that's required to get this. I need to lay this down right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to get down on the ground and focus on how to engage the core properly. This is often a body line drill and it's one of the best things that you can do to practice your shape in the handstand. So we're down on the ground. I want you to look up at the sky, back flat, okay? We're going to hug the knees into the chest and crunch the core in like this. And that's going to do one thing. It's going to force our lower back down into the ground. That's going to be the hollow body shape. Now our goal is to keep our lower back pressed to the ground. See how I can't slide my hand underneath my lower back? That's because it's forced down into the ground. And that's the test that you want to keep there. Now, we're going to keep our lower back pressed to the ground as you lower down and try to get your heels to touch. And then if you can do that, arms straight. And of course, if you can do that, then straighten your legs out and keep your lower back pressed to the ground. This is what the perfect handstand feels like. Now that's going to be really hard at first. So my goal for you is just right now, to keep your lower back pressed to the ground as you lower your heels down. Okay, let's try this together. So, down on our back, hug the knees into the chest. Lower back is pressed down to the ground, and then start to lower, keeping that lower back pressed, keep your hand underneath, make sure it's not lifting, your arches and you can slide your hand under, doing it wrong, keep your lower back pressed, should be tension in the core, lower down until your heels touch, breathe in and out, Close your eyes, focus on the tension in your core right now and how you need to hold this to be able to keep your lower back pressed to the ground. And then if you're feeling good, raise your arms up over your head. Memorize this because this is what you need when you get upside down. And relax. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on transferring that all the way around to our handstand. We're going to get into a tabletop position right now right here on our hands and knees and we're going to do that same core engagement and we're going to suck our belly up and then step back into a push-up position. 
We should feel the same strong core engagement that we did when we were on our back, standing here. And then we're going to set the hands out like this for a Superman plank. Now if your feet start slipping, you can push your feet against the wall. Otherwise, just go ahead and focus on that core engagement, breathing in and out. So, tabletop position, follow along with me. Crunch the core in. Step back into a push-up position, right here. Now make sure that your core is tense and you're feeling that tension, and then step your hands out right here, and this is what tension you need to maintain when you're upside down in the handstand. Close your eyes, hold this for five, four, three, two, one, and come on down. So you get an ab workout as part of this too. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna take this up against the wall. We're gonna focus on that core engagement as we step up. We're gonna do one step in, then two steps in, then three steps in. Every single time, we're gonna focus on engaging the core. So it looks like this. Just watch me for a second. Upside down, step up, and now I'm going to engage the core. I feel that same tension. Once I feel that tension, I take a step in. Now, I'm going to engage my core again. Once I feel that tension, take a second step in. Walk my feet up as high as possible, engage the core one more time, and then finally, last step, and engage the core. And then when you're ready to come down, it's going to be that bail position. Right? Easy enough. Okay? Let's try this again. If you can't make it all the way up against the wall, because you're a little bit scared, that's fine. It's something to work up to in the future. Let's get it upside down, and let's try this together. Push-up position, downward dog. Step up, core engaged. Nice. Step in. Feel that core engagement. I'm feeling it, so I'm going to step in. Now two steps in, engage the core. Feeling good. And finally, all the way in, so my chest is touching the wall. Engage the core. And we have a hollow body shape. And then I'm going to come on down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on pushing the upper chest to the wall. It's going to be upside down, walk in all the way, and we're going to focus on pushing that upper chest to the wall. We're going to focus just on how to do that without worrying about being upside down first. So the move that we're going to do is going to be a door frame lat stretch or a wall lat stretch. It's going to look like this. Hands go out against the wall, and we're going to push our upper chest down to the floor without losing that core engagement. That core engagement is the key to the whole thing. If you lose that core engagement, might as well not even be doing this move because it's easy to arch. It's hard to keep that core engaged while you're doing this. So let's do this together. Hands go against the wall. Down into this lunge position and then push your upper chest to the floor, keeping that core engaged. Take one of your hands, feel your core, make sure it's tense, you can feel the tension in your core as you're sucking it in like you did in that hollow body position and push your upper chest down to the ground. You should feel a stretch in your lats when you're doing this correctly. Three, two, one. Okay, now what we're going to do, sorry, if you can't see this, this is what I was doing. So I was here, I was pushing my upper chest to the ground. It's tough with just one camera angle. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to push our upper chest to the wall here. It's going to be here, we're going to push our upper chest to the wall as we keep our core engaged. And what we're going to do is our goal is to get our chin to touch the wall at the same time as our pelvis is touching the wall. So, it's going to look like this. It's going to be a little bit hard to see, but I'm going to walk up, I'm going to get my chin to touch the wall, and then I'm going to get my pelvis to touch the wall. I engage my core and squeeze my glutes to push it in. That's our goal for right now, okay? Let's walk up and do this together. Push up position, downward dog. Step up, walk in one, two, Three, I'm up close to the wall. Now I'm going to engage my core, push my pelvis to the wall, and then push my upper chest to the wall as well until my chin and my pelvis are touching the wall. That's the goal right now. Feel your chin touching, your pelvis touching, and that's it. You don't want your stomach to touch, just your chin and your pelvis. Three, two, one, and now come on down. Okay, so. Now all we're going to do is focus on taking one step away, keeping the exact same cues, and then we're going to straddle the legs. So one foot's on the wall, one foot's off the wall, but our alignment is the same. Let's get upside down, do this together, okay? Last move of this set, and then we'll have a little break. Push-up position, downward dog. 
Step up. Walk in. One, two, three. Now push the pelvis to the wall, chin to the wall. Keep that tension as you take one step away. Now repeat the process. Pelvis to the wall, chin to the imaginary wall, straddle the legs, and then keep one foot on the wall as you float off. And if you're feeling good, allow your other foot to bounce off the ground. You should feel momentary balance. And if you start falling over, you're going to dig your fingers into the ground, press them into the ground to push yourself back to the wall. We'll talk about that more in a second. Three, two, one. There we go. Okay. We're going to take a little break now. So that right there is the stacked position. We have focused on the bail. You can get out of the handstand safely, and we have this aligned position against the wall. We're also focused on leaving the wall now. What we need to do next is the kick up. We need to focus on how we're going to get into this freestand handstand, which is going to be the kick up. There are a bunch of ways that you can get into the kick up, but I'm gonna be showing you in my, what in, is, in my opinion, the easiest way to do it, which is a lunge kick up. One second. I'm gonna just give ourselves an extra minute here, decompress, to chat. Just breathing in and out, doing this decompression. Let me show you a few other things that you can do. You can take your hand right here, you can grab your wrist so it's isolated, and then you can roll it around in a circle. I always think that feels pretty good. Rolling it back one direction and the other. And then you also can go other wrist right here. Nice way to decompress. Breathe in and out, laying that. Heart rate, come down. It's a good time to grab some water if you got any. So we're here for an hour, and this is going to be everything that you need. This is a lot of information. And if you're having a hard time following along because it's way above your head right now, that's fine. I just want you to pay attention so you can see all the insights and see what this journey looks like in one sitting. All right, now what we're going to do is focus on the kick up. We're going to be focusing on this lunge position kick up which has three key components to it. There is a forward rock of the shoulders, a kick of the back leg, and jump of the front leg to get the hips over the shoulders. So it looks like this. There is a rock of the shoulders over the hands, a kick of the back leg, and then I'm jumping with my front leg to get my hips over my shoulders like this. Rock, drive, jump. Again, rock, kick, jump. What we're going to do is we're going to work on that against the wall. We're going to build this up slowly, doing one, then two, then three. So rock, just rock, then rock and kick, then rock, kick, and jump. So it'll look like this. We're going to get set up against the wall. We're going to have our, be on our hands and knees about an elbow distance away from the wall, right here. And we're going to get into this lunge position. Downward dog, walk the feet up as much as you can so the hips are as high as possible. Then step one foot back, and bend the front foot. I like jumping off my right leg, that's my dominant leg, that's what I'm comfortable with. So, next we're gonna rock forward, and we don't want our head to hit the wall, we're gonna stop just before our head hits the wall. And then we're going to focus on just doing that a few times so you can understand where the wall is. Let's see, how often would you train handstands? You can train handstands daily if you want to, because it's a skill practice, it's all, it's. As long as your wrists don't hurt or your shoulders don't hurt, then you don't have to worry about uh, overtraining with them because it's mainly controlling the musculature. But let's focus on the kick up for right now. <laughs> We're going to focus on rocking forward and stopping just before our head hits the wall. So rock forward and pause just before it hits the wall. The wall is right here and rocking forward and stopping just before I hit it. Just doing that for right now. And then once you know where the wall is and you feel comfortable with that, we're going to add the kick up. So we're going to rock kick, rock, kick. And notice that my front foot right here is just leaving the ground like this. I'm getting enough momentum to kick up like this, okay? So rock, kick, and now we're gonna add in the jump. Rock, kick, jump. And see, I'm getting the wall, focusing on my hips right now, getting those over my shoulders, that's the goal. Rock, kick, jump, and I'm adding more and more power. And eventually, I'm gonna get enough power, I can go up, and I can hit the wall like this and use my feet to stop me. And then control myself on the way back down. So let's try this together, okay? 
We're just going to have the rock, kick, and jump. Stop whenever you feel comfortable. If you can't make it all the way upside down, that's fine. We're going to have this rock, kick, jump. Do this two more times. Rock, kick, jump. If you kick up and don't make it to the wall like this, uh, kick, jump, that's fine. Now what we're going to do is focus on how to control this because it's actually pretty easy to make it to the wall, but our goal is to actually stop right before we hit the wall. And how do you do that? It's through the handstand brakes, which is known as popping your shoulders. Popping your shoulders looks like this. My hands are in front of me, like I'm going to kick up, right? And as I start approaching handstand, I'm going to keep my shoulders relaxed or depressed, and then I'm going to shrug them up as they approach handstand. This is like slamming on the brakes and allows you to stop perfectly at that vertical position once you understand when to do it. So it looks like this. I'm going to demonstrate this to the side right now. Rock, kick, jump, and then pop like that. And that pushes me up and allows me to stop perfectly in vertical. Again, rock, kick, jump, pop like that. And that locks me into vertical. So our goal is going to be to kick up and pop our shoulders so we stop right before we hit the wall. Same position that we were in before. Rock, kick, jump, and then pop as you push vertical. Try to pause before we hit the wall in a momentary handstand. Let's try this two more times, okay? Remember, it's a shrug up, pushing into the ground. That's what a popping, popping the shoulders means. A forward jump, pop. And I'm just going to say, kick up and pop. Like that. So, we have this basic handstand. We're ready to try a freestanding one for the next 30 seconds or so. It's okay. You go over. It's going to be the bail, just like we did before. Stepping the hands around, nothing changes. Only difference is that you're doing it now free in space. There's no wall behind you. The thing to focus on is popping the shoulders, and then where you're going to step to if you start to bail. Let's do three kick ups, okay? Rock forward, kick, jump, and then pop. Like that. Forward, kick, jump, pop. It's helpful if you say it out loud and start pulling over. Just a bail. Stepping the hand around, twisting in the air, and keeping the legs straddled will allow you to uh, come down with a lot more control. Last, last kick up right now, okay? Rock forward, kick, jump, pop. And then I'm falling over, so I bail. Easy as that. Okay, let's go ahead and take a break. Yeah, that pop trick is really cool, isn't it? Glad that you're enjoying this so far. So that uh, pop trick, that's actually something that's really common in gymnastics if you ever see them uh, do a handspring, like a front handspring or anything off the vault. That's actually where a lot of power comes from. And you're redirecting that forward momentum into upward momentum. So it allows you to stop yourself on a dime pretty much. Again, just decompressing your wrist right now. <sighs> ah, shaking it out. Wrists get sore whenever you train handstands a lot. So a few ways that you can compensate for that. You can use a set of push-up bars or parallettes to put your wrist in a neutral position when you're upside down in a handstand. The bail, as you know, will allow you to get off that safely. Or you can turn your wrist out slightly because you have slightly more flexibility in this direction than you do straight front to back. Okay? So now that we're kicking up and we can get to this freestanding handstand and pause in vertical, we're going to focus on kicking up, straddling our legs, and focusing on how to fight for the handstand. We're going to, you can fall in two directions in a handstand. You can fall under, which is towards your stomach, so right here, and falling under, or over, which is when we bail. This is falling over, like that, okay? We're going to focus on how to fight falling under right now. The way we're going to do this is by get, walking up against the wall, and we're going to leave the wall and try to make it back to the wall, okay? So, oh, sorry, we're doing under first, my bad. The way that you're going to make these changes is by imagining that you have a dumbbell in your hand. This is like holding a handstand, okay? You're upside down, and you're falling under, which is like the weight falling in front of you, falling towards your stomach. What you're going to do to resist falling under a handstand is the exact same thing that you do to resist this dumbbell fall. You're going to pull up using your shoulder right here, muscles in your shoulder to pull yourself back up to horizontal as you counterbalance by pushing your chest, and your hips backwards, and you're going to tense your wrist to keep it from collapsing, okay? So again, falling under, I'm going to keep my wrist flexors tense by pushing my palm into the weight. My shoulder is going to pull back up to horizontal, and I'm going to push my chest and hips backwards to counterbalance 
Let's climb back up to horizontal. That's how we're gonna fight for it, okay? So the focus keys that you want to focus, uh, the keys that you want to focus on is shifting the weight towards the heel of your hand, bringing your shoulders in front of your wrists, and then pushing yourself back up to horizontal. So we're going to kick up against the wall like this, and we're going to fall under, and we're going to make those cues. We're going to try to make it back to the wall. And it's okay if you bend your arms. By bending your arms, you're bringing, you're increasing the strength of your shoulders. Like this, I can bring my shoulders further forward, and that allows me to fight with even more strength. We're just doing that right now. So we're gonna kick up to the wall, come down, and then try to make it back to the wall by shifting the weight to the heel of the hands, bringing the shoulders forward towards the wall, as well as our hips towards the wall, okay? Again, there's a lot more detail that go into this. We need to go through things quickly because we're trying to get this all done in one hour. So right here, we're going to kick up. Oh. <laughs> Didn't quite make it to the wall there. I popped my shoulders too early. And then I'm going to leave the wall. I'm going to fight to get back to the wall by shifting the weight to the heel of my hands, bringing my shoulders in front of my wrists, and then pushing myself back up. The most important cue of that is pushing yourself back up. You're going to bring your shoulders forward, and then you're going to use that strength in the shoulders to push yourself back up. Okay? We have 20 seconds left. We're going to try this one more time. Okay? Right here. We're going to kick up. Very nice. And then we're going to come down and make it back up by shrugging ourselves back, uh, shrugging ourselves back to the wall. Come off the wall, shoulders in front of the wrists, heel, going to the heel of the hand, and then push yourselves back up. Like that. Doing great so far. Now what we're going to do is focus on how to fight falling over. Now that takes a lot of strength to fight falling under. Falling, fighting over, you have a little bit less control because it's going to come mainly from pushing your fingers into the ground. It's the exact same concept. Whereas fighting falling under was dumbbell falling in front, falling over is dumbbell falling behind, and we're going to use our chest and our lats to pull the weight back up as we push the fingers into the weight to keep our wrists from collapsing, and then push our hips and our chest forward like that. Falling over, hips forward, chest forward, use the lats and the chest, and then the wrist, push yourselves back up. The way we're going to practice that is making it back to the wall. Exact same process. This allows you to isolate it and allows you to focus on just the correction that you need to make without having to worry about making the opposite correction. That's the cool part here. So it's going to look like this. We're going to walk up close to the wall, as we did before. I'm about uh, forearm distance away right now. And then I'm going to straddle my feet, come off the wall. And then I'm going to push my fingers to the ground, my chest even more open to the wall, and make it back. From the side, it looks like this. I'm here, falling over, I push my fingers to the ground, chest is even more open, and I'm making it my back to the wall by pulling with my lat to my chest. Again, if this is too advanced, not a problem. Just focus on these are the key insights and the journey that you're going to need to take along the way. Okay? Let's try this together. Down the wall, we're going to go three, two, one, walk up, sit all the way in until you're about a forearm distance away from the wall. Then straddle your legs, get in that stack position, and then once you start, and then once you fall over, try to make it back to the wall by pushing your chest to the wall, digging your fingers into the ground, and getting your pelvis close to the wall like that. And there we go. That was that's close as I can. That was about my limit right there. <laughs> and push it. All right, coming down. All right. So that was getting back to the wall. Breathe in and out. Decompress the wrist. Falling over is really hard on your wrist because it stretches your wrist to its very extreme, and then asks you to fight for that right there. It says that as hard on your wrist as it gets. We're going to do a decompression, and then I'm going to show you my secret little tip to be able to spot yourself, because everyone knows that like, it'd be easy if you could just kick up and hold the hands in forever and have someone bouncing your hands back and forth, but most of us don't have friends who can show up every day for 20 minutes to be able to help us train for a handstand. So what do you do in that situation? You can spot yourself using the wall. I'll show you how to do that in another 20 seconds. i got to take a break, too. 
Talk about kick-ups. I did. I just talked about kick-ups. What do you want to know about them? <sighs> okay. So, the secret here is side spotting. What we're going to do is we're going to kick up, and to the side that you're going to bail with, that's going to be on the outside right there. So, I'm going to be kicking up and bailing to my left right here. So, I'm going to be jumping around and land right here if I was to bail. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to straddle my feet so one foot is on the wall and the other foot is off the wall. This is going to allow me to use the friction of the wall to keep myself from falling over or under, give myself a little bit of support while I'm balancing. It's going to look like this. Kick up right here and see how my foot's feet straddle to the side and I can find this, horizontal, this vertical position and then if I start falling under I can keep the friction of the wall to assist myself and if I start falling over friction of the wall to assist myself. We can try this together, okay? Let's do this together, okay? So, remember which side you're going to bail to. That's the most important part here. Because if you're going to bail to your right side and your right side is closest to the wall, you're going to bail into the wall. So, you want the side that you're going to bail to, to the outside. The hand that's going to step around is going to be to the outside of the wall, okay? So, if you stick it out, nothing's going to hit. Then, once you're ready, we're going to kick up and you're going to want to straddle your feet as you approach vertical and catch yourself on the wall. Then your goal is going to be to leave the wall for a second and try balancing over under and if you need it, the wall is always there to catch you. Right here, hands on the ground, let's kick up, pop the shoulders, friction of the wall, foot on the side, right here. Shrug up, push that chest to the wall, squeeze the core. And then when you're ready, pull your foot off the wall for a second, just tapping it like this. And if you start falling under, use the friction of the wall, to assist yourself back up. Start falling over, same deal. It gives you a point of reference and allows you to find where vertical is. We're gonna hold this for another 10 seconds, okay? Try to hold it off the wall, bounce it like this. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and there we go. Okay. So that's how you spot yourself to the side. It allow, that allows you to practice falling over and under. Now we're doing a lot of work right now, so we're gonna go ahead, take a break, allow ourselves to decompress, because as you get more tired and as you get more fatigued, it's gonna be harder and harder to balance on the handstand. You're going to be a little bit slower on your reaction time, and the, your strength is gonna decrease because you're fatigued, which means that you can't recover from as large of a deviation. The other path, they always go back the way down and went up. Any tips? So, uh, biggest tip right there is to walk yourself up until you're reaching vertical. That way, you're going to actually force yourself into that handstand position. Uh, if you skip back to the beginning of this, I demonstrated what that looks like and how to bail properly. The biggest thing is to keep focused on where you're going to set your hand and then pushing into the ground to control your feet on the way down. All right. So, now what we're going to do is we've gone over how to fight for the handstand. And we've gone over how to kick up, we've gone over what the perfect position should feel like, and we're gonna focus on our freestanding handstand now. So for the freestanding handstand, there are focus points. Focus points are specific points on your body that you can pay attention to to improve your balance. I like to use this analogy. So I've got <laughs> this sword here, okay? And, if, and a handstand's a lot like trying to balance it on your finger, okay? Now if I think about what I had for lunch last week, it, my ability to balance it is really diminished because I start noticing that I'm falling later that I can make the corrections to fix, okay? But if I focus on the tip of it and I connect that to the pressure in my fingers, this tip of it is a focus point and my ability to balance is greatly, greatly improved just by paying attention to the right thing because it improves my responsiveness. So in the handstand, you have similar points throughout your body and there are 10 of them in total. We're only gonna have time to go over a few of them because these are detailed, but the main ones to pay attention to are the wrists, the core, and the toes, okay? There are 10 of them in total. The wrists, you have the deltoid, the, uh, the shoulder blade, the clavicle, the uh, elbow, and then you also have the core, the pelvis, uh, or the, the, the core, the glutes, the pelvic floor, and then the top of the thighs, and then finally the toes. But we're just gonna go over the three main ones that are going to get you to a perfect handstand right now because all of these are detailed and the shoulders especially are really complicated. But by paying attention to each one of these, it's going to allow you to get perfect form every time that you kick up 
and then it's also going to allow you to improve your balance. So, first one that we're going to do is the hand focus point. Now with the hands, there are three points of contact. The fingers, the, the knuckles of the hand, and the heel of the hand. And we want to focus on the pressure distribution between the three of them. Focusing on that is going to improve your handstand. So, bring it down on our hands and knees. And what we're going to do is we're going to camber the fingers. Now, cambering the fingers means bending them at this first knuckle right here. So we're bending them like this, like pressing the pads of the fingers down to the ground and squeezing it like you're trying to squeeze, like crush the ground almost. That's going to increase your strength by shortening the distance from the pads of your fingers to your forearm. So press the pads of the fingers on the ground and pull them in towards your hand. That's going to camber the fingers, allow them to pop up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to focus on feeling the three points of contact. So the pads of the fingers are pushing to the ground. Then we're going to focus on the knuckles being pushed into the ground and the heel of the hand. So we can feel all three points of contact at once if we close our eyes. And then we're going to rock forwards and backwards and feel how that changes as we rock forwards and backwards. Ideally, we want to have our weight centered over the knuckles with an even distribution between all three points. So close your eyes, squeeze the fingers, camber them, push all three points on the ground, the fingers, the knuckles, and the heel of the hand, and then rock around, feel where you need to be to have your weight centered over your first knuckle right here on your index finger on both hands. For me, that's right there. I'm going to keep that focus as I kick up, okay? Squeeze the hands and kick up. And now I'm focusing on my hands and that's improving my balance. And then I can bring my feet together like this. Okay. So that's the hand focus point. Now what we're going to do is focus on the core. We're going to skip over the shoulders because there are four points and they all work together in tandem and it's pretty complicated to do. And we can't get that quite done in the next 15 minutes. But we can focus on the uh, core, which is going to pull your lower back from being arched to a hollow back position. There are three ways that you can engage your core. You can Crunch your core. We've already gone over this with a hollow body position. But then you can also suck your core in, like you're trying to fit on a tight pair of jeans. And then you can also brace your core like you're about to be punched or you're pooping. All of three of these are different ways to engage your core and they'll engage different musculature within your abdominals. The crunch will engage your rectus abdominis, the sucking in will engage your transverse abdominis, and then bracing it will engage your obliques as well. And by doing that, you're going to get all three of them engaged and that's going to allow you to have this really tight core that's going to give you this incredible sense of stability. So, our goal is going to be to engage all three of these at once and then to continue breathing while we're on our feet and then we'll take this to the handstand. So, first things first, we're going to suck in the core, trying to fit on this tight pair of jeans. Then, we're going to brace it like you're pooping while keeping that sucked in core at intention. And then finally, crunch it in by pulling your uh, navel and uh, by pulling your navel to your spine and the top of your pelvis up towards your sternum. Keeping all three of those engaged, keep your hand on there, feeling around as you breathe in and out and raise your other arm over your head. Make sure that you're keeping that solid core engagement as you're breathing in and out. That's the hardest part of this whole process. And out. Nice. Feel that tension, make sure it's tense throughout. If your obliques feel weak, that means that you need to brace your core more. If your uh, abdominals feel weak up top, that means you need to crunch your core more. And if you are noticing that you aren't having this strong flat line or feeling this lifting sensation in your stomach, that means that you need to suck in more. Breathe in and out. Keep that core engaged. And once you have that, now we're going to apply that to the handstand. So, the way that you do this in the handstand is you're going to run through each one of these focus points, starting at the hands, moving up to the shoulders, then the core, then the toes. But for right now, we're going to establish the hand focus point because that's the root. That's what keeps us balanced. That's what's going to allow us to make any corrections. Once we have that, then we're going to move up to the core, and we're going to suck it in, brace it, and crunch it. Okay? So, hands have that focus point. Then we're going to feel that pressure, feel where it's centered, and we're going to kick up. Get ourselves balanced. Once it's neutral, then bring the feet together and engage the core by sucking it in, bracing it, and crunching it. Like that. And that creates this incredible sense of stability and allows you to hold the handstand for a very, very long time without too much tension. 
It makes it feel easy, actually. It makes it feel effortless, and that's the goal. It's going to allow you to have this incredible sense of stability by doing that. The key thing is that you don't stop breathing, because if you stop breathing, then you're gonna get lightheaded, and it's gonna get really hard to do. So, we're gonna move on to one last focus point, and then we're gonna practice this a few times, putting them all together, okay? Last focus point that we're gonna talk about is the toes. The toes are my favorite focus point to, to pay attention to in the handstand because you monitor whether or not you're vertical and it's going to allow you to connect with the overall alignment. The toes, of course, this is gymnastics. We want to keep the toes pointed very solidly. I call these ballerina feet, okay? So it's going to be like you're trying to press a big button, out, reach out and touch a big button with your big toe. But focusing on pressing with the big toe and the ball of your foot rather than the, by curling your toes under, it's going to keep your foot from cramping. You want to focus on reaching out and pressing a button. That's the cue to focus on push, uh, pointing your toes. Then from there, you're going to focus on where your toes are above your body. So if you just raise your arms up overhead, feel that focus point, imagine feeling the focus point with your hands, engage the core as we did, and then focus on pushing that button with your toes, going up on your tiptoes, and then paying attention to the alignment of your toes in relation to your hands and seeing that they are directly over each other. That's going to allow you to monitor your position and improve your balance. Just like focusing on the tip of the sword. So, what we're going to do now is going to kick up, we're going to run through the focus points, the hands, then the core, and then finally the toes. And that's going to improve our alignment step by step. You're going to notice that the handstand's not perfect at first, but as you move up, it gets better and better and better. Okay? So, ready? I have my hands, solid focus point. I'm gonna squeeze my fingers in the ground, pressing my knuckles, feeling the palm of my hand. Then, once I'm ready, I'm gonna kick up. Get myself set up. Once I have that focus point, feeling the pressure over my knuckles, I'm gonna bring my hands together, and then I'm going to engage my core, sucking it in, bracing it. <laughs> Forgot to crunch it. There we go. Crunched in and then pointing my toes, pressing the big button with my big toes, and then I'm gonna focus on the alignment of my toes over my hands, and I can hold this pretty much as long as I'd like. Then when I'm ready to come down, I can straddle, and come on down. Easy as that. Now, of course, this is advanced stuff. This is how to master the handstand. This is going to be the focus that you need to bring to your feet. Breathe in and out, calming down. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little head of rush there. So that's going to be the alignment that's going to pull your handstand into this picturesque alignment that you see in you know perfect gymnastics things, circus balancers, all these amazing performance. That focus that you bring to the handstand. These specific points are going to improve your balance dramatically. So let's talk about how you can practice the handstand the last few minutes. So that's I just demonstrated basically all the major steps that you need along the way to master the handstand. The next thing to do is to focus on how you're going to move through these steps, because you've seen them all. Now we're going to talk about how you're going to actually progress from one to the other. <sighs> Sorry, I need to catch my breath. So the first step of this is getting your bail down. Once you have your bail, which is being able to walk up against the wall like this, walking until your chest touches the wall, and then you're going to step your hand around and straddle down to the side like that. Once you can do that, that's step one, okay? After that, then you're gonna focus on the stack position, which is going to be walking up close to the wall, and then taking one step away, pushing your upper chest to the wall, your pelvis to the wall, and squeezing your glutes to get them in line. Looks like this. Walk up, so my chest is touching the wall, pelvis is touching the wall, take a step away, and then repeat the same cues, straddle the legs, and let the other, leg, the other foot float off the wall like this. That's step two. Once you can float off the wall for a few seconds, and you can bail from there, then you're ready to start trying the kick-up, okay? The kick-up, again, has three main components. The rock forward of the shoulders, the drive of the back leg, and the jump of the hips over the shoulders. You're gonna practice that against the wall, making it up, focusing on each one of those three parts, and then you're gonna focus on popping the shoulders to pause right before you hit the wall and stop there. Once you can do this, which is where you kick up, and pause right before you hit the wall, and pause without hitting the wall for a second, then you're ready to move to freestanding attempts. Once you can do your freestanding attempt right here, 
like that and pause vertical for a second, then you're ready to start working on how to fight for that longer. Big misconception is that you need to be able to nail that position every single time. You don't. Instead, it's about reaching close to that and then making corrections to get yourself too vertical and holding it there. And that, again, is fighting over or under. And the way that you do that is you're making it back to the wall. So for fighting under, which is falling towards your stomach, it's kicking up like this, and then making it back to the wall like that. And again, that comes from shifting the weight of your hands to your heels, bringing your shoulders in front of your wrists, balancing with your chest, and then using the strength in your shoulders to push yourself back up to vertical. Exact opposite for falling over. That's going to be walking up against the wall like this, and then falling over and making it back to the wall by digging the fingers into the ground and pushing the chest to the wall like that. <laughs> A little bit too far, getting tired. But that's the idea, is that you're going to be able to practice that and focus on getting back to the wall. Once you can make those corrections, again, combine them together with the side spot handstand. Which allow, uh, the goal is to be able to hold this for a minute and be able to bounce off the wall and hold that for about 10 seconds. Once you can hold that for 10 seconds, then you're gonna focus on trying to bring that to freestanding ground and bring that up to 15 seconds, and 20 seconds, and 30 seconds, then two minutes, and that's the goal. Once you can do a two minute handstand as your, like, your longest attempt, that's gonna give you a really solid foundation. So again, there are several focus points you can bring to your handstand to improve your balance. Just like the sword, remember, by focusing on the tip of it, we improved our balance, and that allows you to stay up for a longer period of time because it improves your responsiveness. The focus points that we went over today is the weight distribution in the hands, the fingers, the knuckles, and the heel of the hand. By focusing on the pressure distribution between all three of those, you can improve your responsiveness, and you want it to be ideally centered over the knuckle of your hand. Then for the core, there are three ways to embrace, uh, to engage your core. You can suck it in, you can brace it, like you're being uh, punched, and then you can also crunch it in. We went over all three of those, and you want to keep, engage all three of those in the handstand to get all the, uh, uh, all the muscles in your abdominals engaged. And then finally, the toes. We have ballerina feet. We're pressing a button with a big toe, and then we're monitoring the position of our toes in comparison to our hands. That's going to allow ourselves to check our alignment and hold our handstand for a very long time. Now, there is a lot more to the handstand. This was obviously all I could cover in an hour-long masterclass. But what I wanted to co uh, convey today is that these are all the major steps that you need to go through. And if you want to learn how to correct this, uh, your handstand by yourself and go through all of this stuff, like you would have a private coach with you in person, then you can check out the link in the description. That is a link to my course, the Master Handstand class, or Master Handstand, which allows you to perfect a, a gymnastics handstand. It walks through the, um, everything that you need to learn today. It follows this model that we did and teaches you all this instruction in much more detailed form by giving you not just you know, the 10 or 12 steps we went through today, but 62 of them in total, and allowing you to break down your form the same way that you would if you had a private gymnastics coach with you in person. And then it's also gonna give you follow-along workouts so you can push yourself for your specific problems. It uses deliberate practice to make your learning a handstand almost effortless, because all you have to do is just press play, follow along with the program, record yourself to break down your form, and figure out what is your weakness and then it'll tell you exactly how to fix that. And it's gonna walk you through everything that you need, starting at a ground level until you reach a master handstand. Now, this was everything that you need to do, and as always, thanks for getting better. Now, I wanna take a look at some of the questions, see if we got anything. Let's see, watch the whole thing after. He goes through the basics. Yep, so any questions right now? I'll stick around for a few minutes. Oh, you know what we can do? We can do this together, okay? Structure is clear, great knowledge of Hansen. So help me. Good. Glad to hear that. You've been great so far. Thanks for all the questions. So what we're going to do, I just want to give you a little bonus for sticking around through that. We're going to do a, few, a little bit of a stretch to work on your uh, posture in the handstand. If you have, there are two types of spots that cause, or three spots that cause problems in the handstand. The wrists, the shoulders, and the hips. And we're going to just do a little bit of a stretch at the end to focus on decompressing all of them. So. First things first, we did these stretches at the beginning. We're going to focus on engaging the core, squeezing the glutes to push the pelvis forward. And this, we're going to just rock forward and feel this deep stretch in 
the hip flexors. Now the hip flexors get tight from sitting all day long because we have these muscles, the psoas major and the rectus femoris that run across the hip joint down to our femur. And these, from sitting all day, will get tired and it's gonna cause this anterior pelvic tilt where your butt is sticking out. But by stretching your pelvis forward, by squeezing your glutes, put one hand on your butt, make sure it's tense, the other hand on your core, you can feel this deep stretch down the front of it and that's going to improve your handstand alignment. We're gonna hold this for 30 seconds. Breathing in and out. And you only need to do about 60 seconds of stretching after this. Are there any assistance exercises that would you try or just use drills and spend time upside down? I think that uh, all the as assistance exercises you need are against the wall, as well as improving your posture. A big problem with a lot of people's handstand is that they're tight, which is what we're fixing right now with how long it is. Let's switch over to the other side. So by stretching your hip flexors, your shoulders, and your wrists, that's going to allow you to uh, improve your alignment in your handstand because the biggest problem is that people have a banana back in the handstand, right? They kick up and they're arched. It looks like this. They kick up and they're right here, okay? The thing is, is that that comes from two things. One, they're afraid to go over, that's, we, that's bailing. The second thing is that they have tight lats, which let's focus on how to fix that next. It's going to be doing the drill of pushing our uh, lats down to the ground. So our lats run from right here along our spine, there's fascia that runs down to the base of your spine right here, up, this wing-shaped muscle, up, wraps around to the front of your arm right here. So our goal is to make that as long as possible. We're gonna to want to turn our hand out, as much so our thumbs are pointing up, and you can do this against the wall. It's not my favorite. I would prefer if you had like a door frame or something like that that you could pull on actually, but you can use the wall. And it's the same stretch that we did right here. Push the outside of the armpit down to the ground, keep the core engaged, and I like to focus on one hand at a time and slightly turn into it. So I'm right here, I'm turning into it slightly, I'm pushing the outside of my lat down into the ground. And then that right there is going to improve your uh, ability to push your arms back like this. Oh, let me show you this really quick. This is, a, uh, this is how you test to see if your lats are flexible enough. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your back against the wall, lower back, press flat, arms go out like this in a W position, and then you're going to push them up, keep your lower back flat against the ground, and you're going to be able to reach up overhead like that. That right there is how you test to see if you're flexible enough for your lat. And doing that stretch will help right there. But to allow yourself to force yourself down a little bit further and push yourself beyond your current range of motion and improve your flexibility, you can use this lat stretch right here. So pushing it down to one side and then the other. And we're just going to hold this for about 15 seconds. Because I already held, I already held the other side for like 30 seconds. You want to hold these for between 30 to 60 seconds. At the end, I like to hold them for slightly longer because we've already worked the muscles and now it's a chance to be tired, connect with yourself, feel good. Breathe in and out. What did you guys think of this? Did you guys have fun? I had fun. Okay, and now we're gonna do one last thing for the wrist stretch. We're going to do a forward wrist stretch. Okay, down on the ground, right here. Hands are wide because we need the flexibility in our wrists to be able to basically pull it back and get them to be 90 degrees without any assistance. If you can do that, then your wrists are flexible enough. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna rock forward, stretch out the wrist, and hold it right here. Keep the elbows locked out, rock forward, and hold it. Most of the time at the beginning, we're gonna do a dynamic stretch, but for right now, we're just focusing on holding it in the front to stretch out the wrist flexors. And we're gonna hold this for 30 seconds. Let me see if there's anything. Go ahead and let me check this. Let's see, get for it. Did live streams? Well, I'm going to be doing this every day for the next 90 days. So if you've got anything that you want to see, like any workouts that you'd like to see covered or anything about the handstand or bio fitness or fitness in general, go ahead and let me know. Leave a comment on this video or send a comment right now because I'm going to be doing this every day. I'm going to be doing, right now the plan is 9 a.m., but actually if there's a better time that work for you guys, I'm thinking maybe a little bit earlier. But I want to do this as a challenge to myself and show you guys this. We're just going to be able to work out daily together. Get strong, we're gonna be focused on the handstands for the first 30 days, I've got all that laid out. But after that, it's a little bit up to you. What do you guys wanna see? I always can come up with ideas, but that's it. Let's see that. Um, definitely check out the videos, perfect. Okay, so thanks so much for tuning in. I'm gonna sign off, again, check out the link in the description for the Master Handstand class, uh, for the Master Handstand <laughs> course. 
and it conveys everything that you need to possibly learn for the handstand, all using deliberate practice, which is the gold standard for learning skills. It allows you to break, it shows you all of these things in a step-by-step -step fashion, breaking it down to the smallest component and then building up to a goal move, showing you how to break down your goal move and identify problems with your form the same way that a private gymnastics coach would, and then giving you personalized workouts for those specific problems. Again, check that out. It's going to guide you through everything that you need to do in way more depth. It is more than five times the length of this, and it's going to be everything that you need to do. Check it out. Link in the description. And if you're interested in live stream workouts, I'll see you tomorrow, 9 a.m. Thanks for getting better.